Hi, everyone. My name is Denise Goss with FIRST, and I'm here today with Jenny Riley, who's going to share with us a talk that she gave at our September 17th listening session uh, with the FDA. We're so grateful to have Jenny as a part of our community. She's done some amazing grassroots fundraising over the years. Uh, so many of you already know her, uh, the mother of Anna, and um, I'm just grateful for her to, to share her story uh, with the FDA and to, uh, to share with us again today, uh, just a version of the talk that she gave on September 17th. So I'm gonna turn it over to you, Jenny. Thanks. All right, here we go. <laughs> on this day, four years ago, I was sitting in a hospital room alone, staring at a picture on the wall, attempting to process what I had just seen. My daughter had been born a couple of hours before that and diagnosed with Harlequin ichthyosis. Her eyelids were so swollen that I couldn't tell if she had eyes. Her skin was white and cracked like a desert and it was squeezing her little body. The cracks were deep wounds, leaving her highly susceptible to infection. They brought her to another hospital an hour away in critical condition, and my husband, mother, and sister followed because I just needed to know somebody would be with her. I was too scared to look up her condition, too scared to know more, so I sat alone, focused so hard on the wall in front of me. On this day, four years ago, I became the mom of a child with a rare disorder. The months that followed were so hard that at that time, I was just focused on getting out of the critical stage. I had no idea that I would be adjusting to a new normal that I never knew could exist. I gave up a career I loved and never worked in the traditional sense since that day. Every day is focused on making my daughter as comfortable as she can possibly be. A typical day for a child with ichthyosis starts with a bath. Anna has spent over 4,000 hours in the bath since she was born. That's over 180 24 hour days in four years. My daughter, daughter's skin doesn't transport a protein to the outer layers. So basically her top layer of skin never forms correctly. Her body knows that it's not right. So it's constantly trying to heal itself by growing more skin incredibly fast. The bath water helps to expand the skin cells letting her top layer come off more easily and allowing her to have more movement during the day and stopping fissures from forming. They happen when too much skin builds up and can be an infection risk. Anna takes a three hour bath every day. In the last hour, I peel all of the extra skin from, the, from her scalp so she can continue to have hair. This process is long and tedious, but for people with ichthyosis, the skin often blocks the hair follicles and kills them. So getting the skin off every day is very important. When Anna was born and the initial skin, skin came off and all of her hair went with it, we have worked very hard to get her hair to grow back. The bath is followed by lotion all over her whole body. We use Aquaphor because it helps protect her skin the most. Throughout the day, we apply lotions as needed because her body cannot hold in hydration. So the emollients help to keep her hydrated and protected. Because of the rate of skin production, she needs a high calorie diet and many with ichthyosis struggle to put on weight at all. Anna is really lucky and has always loved to eat, but throughout the day, she eats almost constantly. I buy two gallons of milk a week just for her. After her bath, she immediately starts to become dry and we have maybe two hours before she will need more lotions. We try to dress her with little skin showing because whatever hits the air dries much faster. Before, before bed, we cover her completely again and change her into pajamas. Once again, covering her skin. Every morning she is covered in extra skin and can hardly move. I carry her downstairs and we start everything over. Anna's weekly and monthly appointments are equally consuming. The skin on the bottom of her feet has fused her toes to her feet, making walking and balancing a problem. So she gets PT four times a week. The skin on her hands restricts movement and she has significantly smaller web spacing than a typical person. So she gets OT three times a week. 
For a long time after she was born, the tight skin kept her mouth open so she doesn't pronounce many words correctly. So Anna also receives speech twice a week. With all of her weekly appointments, she also has ENT appointment every six weeks to get all of the skin out of her ears, ophthalmology appointment every six to eight weeks to make sure her eyes are not damaged because her eyelids aren't fully formed, so she has no protection. She also sees her dermatologist and pediatrician often and has had to see infectious disease, a rheumatologist, and an orthopedic. Anna has had two surgeries on her hands, once at birth and once to remove a mass and attempt another hand surgery to correct her web spacing last year. The skin grew so fast that the hand part of the surgery was largely unsuccessful. Ichthyosis come with, comes with some major risks, and the first and most serious is blood infections. Because she has no protection, so a cut or a scrape can easily lead to an infection, and she has been hospitalized for this a few times in her short life. The last time I found her in, her in the middle of the night with a fever of 105 with no prior signs of infection, and we had to rush her to the hospital where they were forced to drill into her bone to get blood because she was so swollen. The other big risk is temperature because she cannot sweat. Overheating can be dangerous and fev fevers are equally dangerous. In short, you can't just wake up, jump in the car and go. Everything has to be very planned out from beginning to end. I forgot what it was like to take a sleeping child out of the car at night and lay them in their bed while they're still sleeping to run to the beach for a day or to stop at a park on my way home from a day out with the kids. With all of this, hands down, the hardest part of ichthyosis is looking different than everyone else. Anna has, has many birth defects from the extra skin when she was still in utero and her skin is red and very flaky at times. Playgrounds are hard because kids often run away from her or stand very close and stare. She is still young, but has just started noticing that people are looking at her wherever we go. She has been called things like slime baby, freaky, scary, and children have literally run away from her crying on multiple occasions. The other day at a restaurant, Anna in her small voice asked, mom, why is everybody looking at me? And my heart sank because I know I cannot shield her forever. I can't take the inevitable emotional pain away from her, but I can give her every bit of devotion I have to make the physical part a little easier. I spent four years coming to terms with the fact that this is forever, but still leaving myself with a sliver of hope that something will come along and make it easier. I hope that I've helped you understand the weight of ichthyosis and how it's so much more than just skin. If I could pick one thing that I'd like you to take away from today, it would be that any improvement, no matter how small, would make a drastic change in our lives. One less bath a week, one less lotion application a day, one less doctor's appointment a month, and we would feel as if a huge weight has been lifted. Maybe a cure is not possible in my daughter's lifetime, but I still hold out hope that some sort of improvement is.